in my experiences as a researcher, a writer, and a consultant on women in leadership, I've come to see negotiation as the single most important skill for a woman who wants to advance. And there's data that validates that theory everywhere. In particular, I interviewed 20 women executives at the top of their fields and asked them a question with a very compelling answer. I asked, assuming a woman's career success equals 100%, what percentage of that is made up by her effectiveness negotiating and advocating on her own behalf? Uh, the answer I heard was 60%, that a full 60% of a woman's success hinges on command of her own voice, the ability to take a position and make a request. In fact, women negotiate four times less often than men, and I would argue that makes us four times less eligible for the top job, um, for the salaries that we're working so hard to increase, and you know, for any work assignment that comes in. Uh, you know, when we choose not to negotiate, it not just it doesn't just hurt us um, professionally and financially. We're choosing to live with an inconvenience and a less than optimal situation, and I advocate for another way. In pushback, I guide readers who want to learn negotiation tactics from preparing psychologically, and that's an area that very few books and courses cover. It's really underestimated. Um, also, getting ready and making a really strong case. I show women how to use multiple levels of data to make an ironclad case. Uh, maneuvering through the actual conversation on game day is really important, and I offer lots of strategies on that. And finally, in following up a negotiation, it's often a forgotten step, you can really safeguard yourself for all of the terms you just negotiated and keep your interests uh, in the right place. What many women find who begin practicing negotiation skills is that there are often opportunities where there were none before. Um, they often get more than they ever asked for originally. One example is a woman who got some negotiation training, felt stuck in a dead-end job, and chose to negotiate with her manager. The manager ended up saying, I will bend over backward to keep you. Please go write your dream job description and I'll make sure we keep you somehow. Those kind of stories abound when you see women practicing negotiation. What's interesting about the, the, the best negotiators in the world is it's not that they have one mega skill that they all use in common. In fact, they have a negotiating mindset and that's really the thing that, that's the most important. They see the world around them as open to revision and up for discussion. And that's the same kind of idea I advocate. For women, that could mean anything from your maternity leave plan. It could mean promotion opportunities, certainly salary and financial, materially significant conversations. Even how you get your work done. Do I want to work a four-day week? A lot of people ask me, is that even possible in a recession? Can you do it? And in fact, you know, workplace today has some of the most lush, productive conditions for negotiating. Women possess every intellectual tool and then some to be excellent negotiators. And when you consider the fact that we are graduating with the majority of bachelor's and advanced degrees, we have more bargaining chips that we can use in a negotiation. Uh, women also bring a great set of interpersonal skills that can translate to an advantage in a negotiation. Specifically, they're more consultative, they ask questions, they build rapport before they get down to business. Uh, oftentimes women will approach a negotiation as you and I versus the problem, rather than you versus me. Gen Y women require more negotiation skills than their predecessors, and the reason for that is when we query Gen Y women, they tell us their top value is independence, and their number one uh, work goal is entrepreneurship. What that suggests is that when women join the traditional workforce, um, they're going to want a lot of choice and diversity in their work. They're going to want to customize what they do every day, and they're going to need a voice. They're going to need to be able to make a case. This is especially important because so many workplaces today are still fairly rigid. They're going to need to create the change themselves. So not negotiating really endangers our vitality, particularly financially. 
And when you think about it, half of all marriages end in divorce. With socialization to kind of let males take care of the bills and the savings, that can really put women into jeopardy. Add to that the fact that we leave the workforce for 12 years on average and stop being paid, obviously, during that period. It hurts our retirement savings, and all of this is so important because women live longer than men. We are literally the ones left holding the bag at the end. The pushback negotiation system works incredibly well. Um, and the reason is, more than anything, people suffer from low expectations. That causes them to not even get to the negotiating table in the first place. So by setting our sights high, we can contest those low expectations and get much more of what we want professionally, personally, and financially.